Hello, my beautiful friends. <sighs> yeah, I am settling in for, I think, a very nourishing and curious conversation to get us all set up for December because I feel like December has just so many expectations linked into it. Not only do we have whatever we might have when it comes to our relationship to the holidays, whether that be pressure or some grief or maybe total excitement, um, or a weird mixture of all of those. Uh, but also I think just this idea of a final month of the year, there's so much pressure for it to be about culmination, jumping to conclusions, figuring out who we are, knowing what we've done this year and how far we've come. And this strange idea that when we come to the solstice and the end of a calendar year, that somehow this is when all the mysteries are going to be resolved and we're going to be able to have kind of high insight over the whole year. And while to some extent you can definitely look over the course of a year and think about how much has happened, how much we've grown, give ourselves some credit for all of that, I also think that in entering into this December, rather than trying to get to those kind of culminating conclusionary moments that somehow pull it all together, I would suggest that we walk into December and all the way through December and into the new year with this sense of liminality and with this sense of openness to the mystery rather than to this kind of idea of wrapping things up in a nice tidy bow. Um, that was the first thing that came up for me sitting with this December and the messages that were coming through was this idea of the liminal. So that even that word I just love so much. The liminal is based on the Latin root, uh, which is limin, um, the threshold, a threshold, a doorway between two worlds. And I think so often we resist liminality in our lives. We resist these doorways. It feels like something we should just rush through and get to the other side. We want to be in one state and then in another state. But for me, liminality is really where the stuff of life is is. It's where it's waiting. It's where it's sitting. And our life is more about these liminal spaces than it is about the concrete forms that we take. So the first thing I want to say is kind of be open to your own porous liminality this December. Kind of get curious about that. Get curious about that ever changing flow that is you that isn't interested in investing in solid concrete forms solely, but is more interested in the ever changing forms within you and just feeling some curiosity about that. Of course, it's good to have a little bit of structure. It's good to, you know, we need a little bit of structure to be here in this physical world and to, to find a path and not to just float away into kind of nebulous abstraction, of course. But I think so many of us feel like we shouldn't be in the liminal anymore. There's something that should have been wrapped up, decided, understood. And I think I just want to set some expectations about December being much more about the mystical. And for me, solstice time, um, no matter which hemisphere you're in, whether it's winter, summer solstice for you, and this season of shifting from Sagittarius to Scorpio energy is so much about the liminality, the mysteriousness, the unknowableness of all of this. Um, I think even, you know, the old Roman celebration of Saturnalia was about the inversion of social roles. So the rich patrons would be the servants, the servants would be in charge for the day, for the festival. 
festival, um, this whole idea of kind of turning things on their head and getting curious about what the world looks like from a different vantage point. For me, this is much more what December is about. And I think just setting that expectation for it and connecting with it in that way can really change the way we experience this month and this season of the year. It's a very mystical season. And I think that's why there's so many, you know, festivals and celebrations and introspective points in this time of year. The other thing I wanted to mention as setting an expectation for this season is not to pursue self-improvement or this idea of perfect happiness. I know probably we've all thought about this topic a lot. This is nothing new that I'm saying here, but I do think that when we're coming to the end of a year, we feel like we need to have these, yeah, these culminating feelings about who we are, about how we've improved, about how we've moved forward, about, you know, what our linear journey has been. I think it's really a great idea to take all of that off the table in December and to just take off this push to feel happy, to feel satisfied, to feel improved, to feel like we were coming up with all the ways we were going to keep improving ourselves moving forward. It's something that I mentioned in our Mars retrograde conversation, which all of December will be Mars retrograde in Gemini. And you can check out that Mars retrograde chat if you haven't yet. But one of the things I was talking about is about this idea of constantly chasing a future self that we never get to. And I think that's been really valorized in our culture and this whole like kind of billionaire worship culture that we're in. And I know probably all of you aren't really <laughs> into that, but there, there's like this this idea, and I think especially in the American context, that this is where valor is in pursuing our best self constantly, chasing the shadow of ourselves and running after it our whole lives is what makes us responsible, good, valuable, um, like ethical, moral, all of these things. This idea that if we keep chasing ourselves into this like happy self-improved state, that that's what's going to make us okay. And I just want to fly in the face of that completely, that this is actually a season where accepting ourselves as we are right now. In my case, you know, I'm coming here, I'm sitting here. I am just on the lowest bar of energy you could possibly be on my creative ideas like i am trying to like have all these creative ideas and put all these puzzle pieces together and i'm finding it really really challenging right now but rather than being like well i'm going to improve myself into a better version that will be able to do that i realize that this is a sacred time in my life where i am re I'm scrambling all the pieces and, and moving things around in a very profound way. And that doesn't involve this idea of self-improvement. It involves me embracing my bittersweetness, my sadness, some of my slowness, and other parts of myself that have nothing to do with pursuing happiness or self-improvement. So I think I'm my happiest and my most creative when I'm not actually trying <laughs> to improve or be happy and when I'm letting myself be. So that's the second expectation I want to set for this December. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the astrology though, um, set us up for this December and get a feel for it energetically. Of course, this is going to be a Sagittarius into Capricorn season, and we're going to watch as this month unfolds, the energy start to pour into Capricorn as we move through the month. Um, and I really wanted to talk about the astrology around the solstice and just take a moment to sit with that because there's something really interesting happening with this year's solstice. Um, right before the solstice on December 20th, Jupiter is going to re-enter Aries. It just did a little retrograde. It went back and visited Pisces for a short bit. And so it's moving forward back into Aries. So we're coming back to themes around understanding this idea of self in new ways that don't involve so much pressure and stress and is a little bit softer and a little bit more expanded. Um, and then we have the solstice on the 21st, the sun moves into Capricorn, the solstice happens. And right after that, on December 23rd, we have a new moon in Capricorn. And we also have Chiron going direct in Aries. So there's a ton of energy in the few days around the solstice 
where all this energy is going to be getting activated in the cardinal signs of Aries and Capricorn, just totally lit up. And that will kind of continue till the end of the year because we also have Mercury getting set up here um, at the very end of December on the 29th to station retrograde in Capricorn as well. And it's going to be joined by Venus and Pluto. All three of those, Mercury, Venus, and Pluto are going to be together in the sign of Capricorn as Mercury stations retrograde. So we have a ton of energy the second half of this month in Capricorn and in Aries doing some really powerful work. I think this is interesting and worth note because Aries and Capricorn are the two signs that I would say are the most deeply related to this idea of being somebody in the world. You know, Aries is all about that I am. I am. <laughs> I exist. I'm here. I'm taking my space. I'm initiating things. I'm moving through things. And Capricorn is all about like our legacy, the way we show up to our work in the world, you know, the way that we make impact in the world. And I think these two signs, these two cardinal signs that are all about initiating action often get embroiled in this idea of self-improvement, of being somebody, of pursuing goals, which in and of themselves are not negative things, but they do get co-opted in this idea of constant pursuing of these ideas of success, of mastery, of domination, and, and really exhausting thematics. And one of the things this solstice season this year and this December in general is to invite us into a more mystical understanding of our connection to the signs of Aries and Capricorn. Um, this idea of the initiate is something that's really, really powerful. Uh, Michael Mead, who does a lot of work with living myth, the way we work with myth in life, says that once we step onto the path, it will take us much further and much deeper than we would ever choose to go on our own. Genuine initiations in life involve us in the mysteries of life and death, so that if we know the outcome of a certain path, then it is by definition not initiatory. And that really spoke to me because, you know, we think about kind of this idea of owning our presence in the world, owning our identity in the world as being something where we know our path. But this idea of being initiatory, of allowing ourselves to unfold involves a not knowing, a not knowingness about the path, a not knowingness about the way that we step onto that path. And I think that the energetics of this December are going to be highlighting that. Um, they're also going to be highlighting our discomfort with that kind of not knowing that is involved in being our truest selves um, and that our culture doesn't really ever give us support on that not knowing. Our culture tells us that if we are following our truest path, that if we are being our truest selves, we will know exactly where we are at all times. We will be oriented at all times. We will have a direction that we are going at all times and we will never want for answers. But the wisdom that is coming through here for this solstice season, what I think the solstice is really about and what this season of the year is really about is actually that the more truly we are living with ourselves, the more we are going to be on a path that we have not seen before. The more we are going to be on a path that feels very unfamiliar and that we don't know what those ingredients are yet. And I think this also flies in the face of this idea of self-improvement. The idea of self-improvement is that we are on a path that we know what it is and we can pursue our way down that path. And there is a set way, a set form that we are supposed to take at the end of that self-improvement, this initiatory path that we're getting asked to work with, with all this energy in Aries and Capricorn is going to be much more about releasing this idea that there is a set form and take away some of the pressure about this pursuing the shadow of our future selves. And I think that's going to be a really, really important energetic that we're going to be working with. And it might feel uncomfortable, but I think it's so soothing and comforting to know that the not knowing is often a sign that we are more deeply in touch with ourselves than we realize. And my final thing I wanted to just say about this December as a whole, there's a lot of powerful energetics going on. I'm going to be getting into that in detail as we move through the month, especially over on my Patreon, if you're looking for a little more support. 
But own your attention and your energy and call it back to yourself this December because there's going to be a lot of noise, I think, in the world. You know, December and January, there's always so much coming at us. All the extra advertising, all the extra intense news. We live in a very intense world. There are some really powerful and intense things going on in this world that have to do with war and revolution and all sorts of things. Um, It's a lot to come at us. So it's very important, and this is my final thought for this December chat, It's very important to call your energy back home to yourself and to not let yourself be drug around by every, (laughs) all the energies that are moving around, you know? And I think that involves this idea of pursuing happiness and success and self-improvement. The the goals and the markers for those based on culture and based on advertising shifts constantly from one month to the next. So this is a great season to call all that energy and that attention back home to you. And to let that quiet be the thing that guides you. Now, I just want to pull one card. I feel like it just feels right. And we're going to just do a very brief moment with this card. I just want to see what wants to come out. The Fool. That's wild, actually, because it speaks to that initiatory path that I was talking about just a few minutes ago. That idea that when we're really on our path, we don't know where it's going. (laughs) And that really does fly in the face of everything we're ever taught from the time we start school all the way through, doesn't it? So embrace the energetic of the fool. The fool is definitely not concerned with the popular approach to self-improvement, success, fame, or being anybody in the world. And I think the fool is also like the hanged man and other symbols that have to do with contrarianism. It's about turning the world on its head. And like Saturnalia and like this work with the solstice, there's a lot of wisdom in December in general that is about inverting everything, turning everything upside down and seeing it from a different perspective completely. And that is its own mystical journey that involves a lot of not knowing and unknowing. And I think that's going to be really the biggest theme of December. So the question is, are we going to be able to let ourselves bask in that unknowing and just kind of let it be? Or are we going to fight our way through the unknowing and judge ourselves for it? Um, And this is something I'm definitely still working on um, as I sit here with my empty cup and my need for a lot of just nothingness and just not pursuing projects at the moment. Um, Can I let myself have that? It's something I'm working on, but um, I would love to see you over on Patreon. I'm going to be walking us through this entire month and all the beauty that lays ahead for us. Um, It's a really, really wonderful space where I can offer you so much more worksheets, reflections. We're going to be doing so much to do with these aspects that I just mentioned briefly here in December. You can, of course, find me on my Instagram and my website, and I would love to see you here. We have so many deep, nourishing conversations ahead in the coming weeks as we close out 2022 and open up 2023. So I will see you, I hope, here in the very near future. Have a beautiful December, my lovely hearts.